Welcome everyone to Authentic as Fuck podcast. Let's start. What do you want to talk about? Um, well, I had a few things that I was thinking this week uh, about. Mm -hmm. So maybe to start with that uh, and to yeah. see where it goes. So last time we talked about uh, we try to make this carousel uh, if we should uh, say oh, what yeah. we think. I forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah. It's a positive thing. Um, so you're talking about the um, like compliment, right? Giving compliment. Yes, yeah. yes. So I still wasn't sure, like, what to do with that because uh, we, I understood that we should be polite, so to like respect another person. But uh, then I was like, there is, you can be polite but not to be kind and you can be polite and be kind from the person giving the compliment. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, then I was thinking in general, like, because there, I think remember what, what we decided was that first we need to make a decision. Are we talking to the person giving the compliment or are we talking to the person receiving the compliment? Yeah, because it's a two different advice. Yeah, yeah. Right? I was thinking when I was thinking about this topic, it, it was so should we be kind in general? Because I mean, yes, we should be kind. No, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> but why? I mean, we. Ah, uh, okay. Because uh, you know what I think. Okay. I'm I'm a I'm a strong belief of believer of being selfless by being selfish. I don't believe in just being selfless for the sake of being selfless because I think we're not built like that. I think as humans we're already selfish. I don't know if you read that book Selfish Genes by Richard Dawkins. No. <laughs> but like it it's it 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 goes uh, it, it's it's a book on uh, evolutionary biology. So it talks about how how things have evolved. It's super fascinating. It's super fascinating. So like, for example, there's a story there where there's a butterfly that's poisonous. So if a bird eats that butterfly, it'll die. Mm -hmm. And this butterfly is yellow. So birds recognize that if they, they uh, eat the yellow butterfly, they'll die, right? Yeah. So birds have evolved to avoid yellow butterflies. But what happened is there's a, there's a defective gene that for this non-poisonous butterfly that are yellow so that's a defect they're not they're not supposed to be yellow mm -hmm. but it's it's there was a defect in some butterflies that were yellow and the birds stopped eating them so then th those birds evolved <laughs> to mm -hmm. so so then now there's like these yellow butterflies that are not poisonous right or something so it, it talks about like how how like how there's so many fascinating stories of like how certain species evolved. Like it's so amazing. But basically what he's saying is that we are, you know, it, he's talked about the idea of a selfish gene, right? So our DNA is our, our only goal for, for our, our genes, our DNA is survival. And the way we do it is like me, I'm, I'm son. Yes. <laughs> But I'm just a bus. I'm just a bus that's carrying my genes. That's all I am. Mm -hmm. And my genes don't care about the bus. They just want to survive. And that's why, like, procreation, like, that's why m almost all the decisions that we make is based on survival of our genes. Meaning, like, you know, like, as soon as you have a bit, uh, have a kid, like, something changes in your, mm -hmm. in your thing that you, you less, you care less about your own survival than your child's survival. But before you have a baby, you care more about you, like your main, your number one goal is survival. <laughs> is to, so every decision make, even when we make a decision to not be judged by people, right? To be kind to somebody because mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to get, even that's a survival decision because 
you know, from our hunters and gatherers days or like even like for 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 the last okay. whatever two hundred thousand dollar years but humans how, been alive. Okay. How uh then um some some people are not caring for their health. Mm-hmm. So they're like actually damaging their genes on the way. They don't care if uh, I think everyone cares about their health. They they just uh, but they they can't delay gratification. That's a different thing, right? Like it's it's the it's the modern society has made us all <laughs> like <laughs> you know, delay so we don't see it right away. But of course we everyone like everyone cares about their health. Every, nobody wants to die. <laughs> oh, I I've seen many people just being about like mm, you need to die out of something so they don't go to the doctor or unless uh it Yeah, but I think they'll it, it'll change once the doctor says, "Okay, you're diagnosed with cancer." Like I, I think it, then that it's just that they they realize it too late because it's we're so disconnected from our like this modern society has made it so that so we're just so disconnected from reality. You know, like, but like in the old days, okay, like, you know, humans, like we, that, I don't think that's because they don't care about their survival. I think that's because they're just stupid. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like every, every smoker knows that that's going to cause the lung cancer. It's just that they don't actually believe that it'll happen. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they believe it'll happen, but. They're delusional. Like, ah, one more cigarette wouldn't hurt. Yes. Yeah, so, ah. <laughs> so I imagine there is a gene in a bus. So the bus is delusional. This is what you are saying. Bus is going, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and that's what I consider ego. Our bus is the ego. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like whenever I say ego, that's what I mean. The bus. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so how much the what I'm asking myself right now is how much gene has influence on the bus because we see how bus is influencing uh, I see what gene. you mean. yeah so that's a good question, yeah i I maybe like the problem is that I don't know. <laughs> Um, I guess I'm that's thinking. a that's a good question. I have I've never thought about that, but I'm sure some people have. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm thinking about this like test that we do, like Big Five. So I guess the personality test. Yeah, yeah. So I guess our genes are showing these traits. So if mm-hmm. you are more neurotic or less neurotic, it will influence your decisions. You know, if you're too neurotic, it would be... Even that's probably has to do with... Even, like, that's probably evolutionary, right? Like, evolution yeah. has probably made sure that we have this many, this type of people, <laughs> this many, this type of people. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? For the survival of our, survival of our own species or something like that. <laughs> and it's interesting, if you think about that, like, what genes are dying? Because, you know, if you have some... <laughs> <laughs> that's true if like if, what personalities are that yeah you have that butterfly that anomalies that are like dying so what kind of anomaly well th- that's what i was trying to say i think what happened is the reason why we're kind is because the unkind people have died <laughs> the unkind genes have died over time because you know, like if you're in a group of tribal people that have to make fire and hunt together, yeah. and when they get when saber tooth tiger comes, they have to work together to protect each other, right? Yeah. Like if you're the unkind person who's an asshole, they're the ones that got kicked out of the tribe, right? <laughs> so they're the ones that died off. Yeah. In order for us to make sure we survive, they're, we had to be like part of that. They're like cockroaches. They would survive anything. No, they can't. They can't because they're alone. Like a, I, a group I get of a, from your example, but you know yeah. this means that you don't have. You mean? Oh, you mean? Okay, yeah. There's probably some genes. So, so 
if you're completely 100% this asshole, right? Yeah. And you're, uh, you're you'll probably die. You're a sociopath, but you need to... No, no, no. Sociopaths are, are not assholes. They, sociopath is actually can act like the most kindest person, right? Okay. Okay, so, okay, so just rude, <laughs> rude person. Yeah, just 100%. This person doesn't even know how to be nice. Like, okay. like that they've been kicked. So those people probably died off. So I, I don't think those people even exist today, right? Uh, uh, through evolution. But I, I'm sure within here, there are some people who's not kind. They're, they're, they're not kind. They're not selfless. They're very, very selfish, but they know how to be a little snake and like mm -hmm. <laughs> work with people. And those people probably survived really well, right? <laughs> <laughs> so but i i guess what i was trying to say is that maybe the reason for why people why are we kind well it's probably in our genes mm -hmm. like that's why we we don't even know why we're being kind we don't even know why we're being polite or all of that we don't you know we don't even know why oh i don't want to i don't want these people to hate me but it's I think it's a survival. It's it's, it's for selfish reasons, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Hmm. But okay, let me give you an example. So you, you can have a dentist that is polite but rude. They would be like, "Sit here, open your mouth," and they're like, Zzz, "And you're totally afraid of what's gonna happen next." But they are like professional, polite. They are not. They're just, you know emotionless in that situation what what is what does it mean for you to be polite well to be polite means to to pay respect to another person like if you have like for example like saying appointment, please if you have appointment at certain time there is mm -hmm. Um, there is your dentist waiting for for you. Then that dentist is having I don't know clean clean room for adequate room for the purposes that you are there. Then they are like saying to you, "We are going to do this and this to your teeth." So that's it. So I'm I'm looking it up actually right now. So I'm looking for a definition of polite. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> Having show behavior that is respectful and considerate of other people, uh, relating to people who regard themselves as more cultured and refined than others, and then kind mm -hmm. group of people and things that have uh, character, nature. Um, oh no, that's different. Like that, I think that's talking about like what kind of like you know. Oh, okay, so kind. Um, Kindness? Used in a polite request. <laughs> They're using having or showing a friendly, ge generous, and considerate. I guess like the definition is very similar, polite and kind. Maybe we can use respectful and kindness. Like maybe you, you think kind is a little bit more than polite is here and then kind yes. is here. Yes, because <laughs> when I had intention... In what my intention in post wasn't to um, like say you should do this or you should not do this. It was more about to to show the nuance in communication that we all feel, and something is different. But we there is no must in that. You sh there is no force to do it. But there is a difference if you do it. So let me just finish my example to, to show you what I think about. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine this, this dentist that is respectful. So they are doing their things, their job professionally. Um, they're just like, let's imagine a cold person. So they're there for the job. Well, they're not disrespectful. They're not disrespectful. They're yeah, just... they're not polite, but yeah, they're yeah. they're not. They're just neutral. <laughs> but they don't do anything to offend them or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. They're just respectful. But they're not going. Yeah, yeah. So, they're not saying like, "Oh, sit here, please." 
Like they're they're saying sit here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Sit here. Open so your just mouth. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Close your mouth. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, um, and then we imagine a person that is going to the dentist. Probably. So most of people have at least some fear of going to the dentist. So, oh, it's going to hurt what they're going to do. So kind of, I, I know so many people that are procrastinating to schedule the appointment for the dentist because they know they need like that mental preparation to go. Yeah. So imagine if you have this experience, probably you will fear even more because on the other hand, let's imagine that you have a kind dentist that welcomes you. Hello. Okay. Now we will do, let's see what we have here. So, okay. Um, you have a TV here, so maybe you do want a music or some series. <laughs> let's show you friends. So then you have friends on the screen and you open your mouth and then they're like, mm -hmm. okay, we have a little bit of cavities here. So I'm going to do it. So where mm -hmm. it's going to be, it's going to take us like a 15 minutes. It's going to hurt just a little bit, but I will tell you everything in advance. Okay. No problem. So then something is different there. It's going to hurt the same, but you have different feeling. And this person probably, when they need to schedule appointment again, they will not be afraid as much. So, so this is what I got. Like, there is a difference in when we are kind, it's not a must. And I don't know what's the lesson. That's like, that is, that, that example is kind of extreme though. Yeah, because, I want um, to make that as an extreme yeah. just to yeah. to show you. But you're, I think, the, well, two things, right? Difference. Because here's the problem when you're when in that case when it goes extreme, because like I, <laughs> I actually my cousin told me this right, like the the most friendly dentists are gonna become the most successful dentists. Like the first dentist. I bet you it's not very successful. <laughs> the second dentist, I bet you makes a lot of money. Do you understand what I mean? And it has nothing to do with how good of a dentist you are or not. It has to do with more, more, more. Of that. So that's why I, I think in that case, it's not a really the perfect example because some people might just do that for business. <laughs> do you understand what I mean? Okay, son. Don't like, point but, the example. Did but a, a better example is like because even that first dentist, at the very least, there's like a when we say polite, there's a there's a standard norm, right? For example, like sit here, please. That's like in a professional setting, that's considered the norm. They don't have to say please, but they say please anyway. And I think that's where we were talking about where you say you don't have to compliment anyone when when they put on makeup, but the society has taught us that, oh, if somebody normally doesn't wear makeup and all of a sudden wear makeup, mm -hmm. well, hey, we should compliment that. Like, it's not even that I want to compliment that. I don't even care, but it's like, if I don't say anything, that means I'm a, you know what I mean? If you don't compliment, then you're, okay. you're well, it's complimenting has become the norm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what I'm trying okay. to say. Okay. Yeah. Again, but we are, going further from what I, from my point, I want you to go back to my point. So, which is, Oh, I thought that's what we're talking about. Complimenting. Yes. But in terms of the example, so I guess now if somebody just say, come here, sit, sit mm -hmm. here, it's going to sound rude, but my point was not for for this dentist to sound rude, so it can be like, sit here, please. You know, it's it's not a problem in that. Just the difference between that and somebody who is really kind. Overly kind, you mean? Like, they don't have to be. They're like overly kind. 
like if I were to, if if I were to meet a hundred people, like and everybody has different level of kindness. Like why are some people overly kind and some people like just normal, or and some people are just less than kind? I don't know what's normal you? kind. What's normal kind? What's overly kind? Like you know, so when you you meet people and like it sounds like the person that you're talking about is like really very considerate and very like some people are like more kind than others. Yeah, so, so you know. I just I'm worried if you think that overly kind means means to be pushover. I wasn't thinking that, but uh, no, actually, that's that's kind of different because there are some people who's who's not very kind, but they're still a pushover. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I actually think that the most people that are really kind are not pushovers. Like, I, I think those two things are completely separate, actually. Okay, so what means to be overly kind? Like the, the dentist that you talked about. Okay. So would you, would you like to go to this dentist or to the first one? The second one. Why? Of course. <laughs> Why? I mean, it's not, I guess there's two reasons. One, because obviously you want to be around somebody who's more, you know, kind and more, more friendly. Mm -hmm. But secondly, like, it sounds like he, it, there's other things that you said that too, right? If the, if the dentist says, oh, the, they're being more considerate, like, oh, I'm going to tell you before I do anything and those kind of things, mm -hmm. like, those are actually helpful. It's, you know. You know what I mean? It's actually better <laughs> for me as a as a patient because it's going to be less painful, right? No, it's going to be the same painful, but but he's going to make sure that I like. I would imagine the the considerate person are the ones that are going to actually. This this is something that uh, my my dentist cousin mentioned is the best dentists are actually very painful. The ones that are like not as painful, like, like the ones that are like really considerate of their patient and they're doing things in a way that it's not as painful when they, like the best dentists, when they do the teeth cleaning, they'll be like, <laughs> like they don't care about your pain. Like they'll make sure that it's clean. But the, 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 the more considerate dentist who wants to make sure that you don't feel pain because that's how you get more more patients. Like patients prefer to go to the dentist that feels less are less painful. Right? So like if it's less painful, they'll actually refer them to their friends. It's like, oh, you gotta go to the dentist. Like, oh, he does it, it doesn't hurt at all. He's so good. He's so gentle. But they don't know that actually what's happening is they're not as good of a dentist because of that, right? But they don't they don't know that, right? And it's not like the dentist is telling them, Oh, I'm I'm a bad dentist because of like you know what I mean? But those tend to be the more successful ones, like financially. So that does make a difference. <laughs> but if you're talking about like complete, completely re regardless of that, if just one is more friendly, because like, you know, one is more friendly just, just from personality, yeah. then you would still go to the one that's kind. Even, anyone would no yeah even when you when you ask chat gpt for a question they say hey i hope this helps uh, and you know you have these kind words in the beginning or you say hey give me another ex give me another example and they say oh no worries oh so sorry thank you. i will let me show you another examples or something like that so even even mm -hmm. ai has this kind of this thing they could only give information, but there is something to it. Okay. So is there a lesson? So my question for myself this week was, can we be, can we, uh, can we be more kind than from what we are? So this is first question for myself. Um, 
And if we can, should we advise each other that we should be more kind? Like, sh should we be more kind than we are right now as a society? Yeah, yeah. Can First of all, can we be more individually? Can we be more kind than what we are? Can, can this, like, respectful dentist be more kind if, if they are not? And on the other hand, should we be more kind if we can? I don't know. I mean, it's nice okay. to have that experience. I personally like that. I mean, it's a free country. So it's a free, like, if you want other, that's why I said it, it has to do with, uh, like, the selfish genes, right? Like, the ones that want everybody to like them is going to be more kind. Mm -hmm. The ones that care less about people liking them is going to be less kind. And and some people have more more of that gene than others, right? So if you want to be liked, be kind. This is like. I mean, I think subcon. We're not. Our brain is like, it's like okay, I gotta be nice to this person. So this person, we're not like calculating that in our yeah, brain. Yeah. But I think it's automatically just subconsciously happening. Because you have a people that, that would say, I'm saying everything what I have, you know, to your face. And mm -hmm. a kind person. So they're let, they don't have the kind genes. <laughs> yeah. <they're laughs> or their kind gene is less. <laughs> yeah. And um, so a kind person would put that, you know, would have a package to say the same thing in a nicer way. So they will not lie, but they would pick up pick up time and place to say it and because how. they're because they're considerate of that person. Yes. Yeah. Maybe there's two ways, right? Maybe one, if if they naturally have that gene, mm -hmm. then they they're considerate of that person because you, you you know you don't want to hurt this person's feeling or something like that mm -hmm. but it's kind of built in they like their gene know that i'm just being selfish but the boss doesn't know that mm -hmm. the boss is just you know what i mean but then i think the sociopaths are the other case where right the boss is fully aware <laughs> like they don't have that gene of just subconsciously just doing it they're the mm -hmm. they're like the assholes right inside but the boss is aware that, okay, I, I can fake being kind so that I can get this person to like me for my own. So that, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. boss being selfish versus here, the gene being selfish. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Maybe. So then this means that there is no advice in here. So na nature would do their thing, however we say. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know why we're talking about this because when we say the compliment thing, it's we were already talking about case scenarios where people are complimenting because there's two ways you can compliment someone, right? You can be like the sociopath. You can actively compliment in a passive-aggressive way mm -hmm. where, you know, like, you ever heard of backhanded compliment? No. Like if somebody comes and be like, "Oh my gosh, congratulations! Like you got this job. Like it's it's you you know you like I I, I didn't think you can get it, but you know so I'm so uh, happy you got it, right? Or like you find somebody be like, is. "Oh my gosh, oh yeah, oh my gosh, I can't believe you, you know you found you you found such a pretty girlfriend. Like mm. you know you you really like <laughs> you know like she, you know she she she's like." She's, she's 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 too good for you or whatever it is like that's you know like people yeah. and and doing it in a purposeful way right where i'm complimenting you in order to put you down mm -hmm. so that's passive aggressive so i'm i know that my intentions are negative right 
But then we were talking about the case scenarios where their the intentions are not negative, where they actually genuinely are, are mm-hmm. being are giving compliment, right? That yeah. like that's the area that we were talking about. But sometimes the person might not take it that way. And then and then now you you're going deeper and say, oh, why do we do that, right? But the reality is, it doesn't matter why we do it. <laughs> Well, I mean, if so, if somebody is being genuinely kind, this is why I I don't. This is why I don't like giving the social advice, like how society should act, what's moral, what's immoral, what's offensive, what's not offensive. The reason why I don't like that is because where do we draw the line? I talked to my friend, uh-huh. and one thing that uh, she told me um, stuck with me. She said, I'm not judging. I found out that I should not judge by someone's behavior, but with someone's motivation behind the behavior. So, so the yeah, same. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is it. The same thing. Uh, if so. So, if the mo- motivation was good by complimenting, I think there's nothing wrong. Like, can I give you an example? Yeah. There's this movie that <laughs> there's a I don't I don't know if you saw this movie. It's called Five Year Engagement. You should watch it. It's a good movie. I mean, I I really like it. Okay. Um, it's it's about a it's, it's about a couple who got engaged for five years. <laughs> they get married for five years after they got engaged because like shit happens. Like life happens. You get busy and. But anyway, in that movie, there's a scene where the guy's a chef. And they go to this party and they're, you know, they're, they go to party and he's meeting all these new people. And everyone asks, like, oh, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm a chef, right? Like, and he keeps meeting after people knew. It's like, oh, I'm a chef, right? And every time he says, I'm a chef, he's like, people are like, oh, have you seen Ratatouille? You know Ratatouille, the mm-hmm. Pixar movie with the, the rat? Oh, a no. Chef. <laughs> no. Okay. And then, like, some people are like, oh my gosh, have you seen Ratatouille? It's like, and the reason why they said that is because they're trying to connect with that person as a, because he's a chef. It, it's kind of like, um, you know, I, I was writing this carousel. This is where I got this example from. Like, if somebody's like, "Oh, I work at Pixar," and let's say you love Toy Story, mm-hmm. and you're like, "Oh my gosh, I love Toy Story," right? Your intentions are not bad. Yeah. You're trying to be, but to, to that person, around. I can kind of see like if I'm at a networking party, I'm like, oh, I work at Pixar. It's like, oh my gosh, I love Toy Story. And then I talk to this person who's like, oh, I love work at Pixar. It's like, oh my God, I love Toy Story. Like if people, I can kind of see how this person can get triggered, mm-hmm. right? Like it's the same way if I say, oh, I'm, I'm from Korea. It's like, oh my gosh, I love kimchi. Like yeah. that. So that's why like you can't really, some people might do it in an intentional way. Some people might not do it in an intention. There's no way of knowing, is what I'm saying. And there's no way of knowing what's offensive, what's not offensive, what's compliment, what's not really com- There's really, like, anybody can get triggered about anything. Mm-hmm. So by saying, be careful who you compliment, what you're saying is, no, you might as well not talk at all. Yeah. <laughs> because anything you say, any word that comes by, out of your mouth can offend somebody out there. <laughs> And that's my problem with giving giving an advice to yeah. make a better society is because the we can only worry about ourselves. We cannot worry about, you know, like Yeah, there is I see, I see. There is also a thing that we can be uh kind or in terms of if we are going to compliment or not compliment or whatever we are, how we are approaching another person, not because we are considerate, Mm -hmm. but because we are afraid of what will happen if we trigger a person. So let's be on a safe side because we don't know how to approach the situation. I know, but that's so dangerous because now you're starting to, you're almost because if you want, if you really start thinking like that, like I literally need to stop every time I open my mouth, I have to stop. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, this might. And I can't. It, it, it's kind of like what's happening in the comedy world right now. Like, you know, like people are saying, like, "Oh, that joke is offensive. That joke is offensive." Like, but <laughs> you know, like a lot of jokes are like, if you stop censoring jokes, there wouldn't be comedians are left. Yeah. And and that's the most dangerous society that you can live in. Have you ever heard of the story of like the 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 emperor has no clothes? Mm-hmm. The 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 reason why an emperor needs that that joker the the what do you call it like the I, know, I don't know what this I know I know what you mean but I don't know the expression yeah the reason why this per, the this person is so the I, I forgot what what this there's a word for it right they're like they're okay, me... within a kingdom yeah yeah there is in the kingdom person. Yeah, jester? Is it a jester? Yeah, jester. There's, the reason why you need a court jester is because the king, the emperor, can say whatever he wants and everybody will, everyone around, in, around them is a yes man. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, yes, you're right. You're right. Everybody's saying you're right. It doesn't matter what he says, right? The jester is, can, is the only one who can disagree with them because he's doing it in the form of a joke. So it's just for joke, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is why it's so important because if the emperor has no clothes on, the jester is the only one who can say it, right? Everybody else is thinking it. Nobody can say it. Mm. And that's why when a, when an emperor gets rid of the jester, that's the sign of real tyranny. Yeah. A, a, a good emperor will not get rid of the jester because he understands the Im- importance of him checking his own biases, right? So when a society starts banning comedians... That is the sign of society falling, collapsing, and going into tyranny. Mm. And and that's why I think it's dangerous for me to say, hey, you should be careful before you open your mouth and compliment someone. Yeah. For the same reason, you know what I mean? It's important that we speak our, our truth, even if it hurts somebody, even if it's offensive to someone. I actually think it's important for society to judge. You know, like that post that I said about how it's better to see the snake out in the open than it hidden. Mm-hmm. Because the only thing, if somebody's really a racist or something like that, or really like offensive or something like that, by censoring that person, all it's doing is we're just mm-hmm. hiding. It doesn't like it doesn't, it doesn't mean this becomes better. <laughs> this person becomes better, right? Like. So it, it's actually important for us to speak all of these so that everything's out in the open. And as a collective, we're going to judge. Like, oh, that's wrong. That's right. whatever it is, right? And if it's really long, wrong and everyone ag- agrees that it's wrong, then probably that person will feel it, right? <laughs> they're they're, they're going to have to, everyone should be able to say whatever they want and then deal with the consequences of what they said. Okay. Rather than us saying, oh, you shouldn't say that. Oh, you shouldn't compliment people. <laughs> okay. So you changed my mind on this topic. So <laughs> I did? Yes. <laughs> That's all it took? <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Wait, on the topic of compliment... Or on the topic of, like, telling the society what's, telling people what's good for the society or what's bad for the society. So, my main (laughs) point was on compliments. Mm -hmm. And then if I extrapolate that, it's on topic of um, what we should or should not say. Is there something that we should not say? So, Mm -hmm. because especially with, I mean, like, if you ask me, this might be controversial. Like I'm, I'm, I'm American. So I'm going to be like, I'm a absolute free speech. Absolutist (laughs) when it comes to free, free speech. I don't think there's anything that anybody should be allowed to say. 
as long as it's not like, um, you know, go kill this person. <laughs> like, cause that's like, that's an, that's an actual, what's going call it? It's a motive, right? It's like, it's a direction. If I'm hiring a, but that's not, that's, that, that's not considered part of the free speech. That's actually, you know, it's a motive. It's a, if I give a direction, if I hire a hitman, I don't say, uh, go kill this person mm -hmm. and to go kill this person. I'll, I'll pay you, you know, a million dollars. And then, then yeah. let's say that person killed that person. Right. I can say, Oh, I can say whatever I want. It's just free speech. I can't, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I so, see. I mean, that's not even considered part of free speech. Like I, I, we should be able to say whatever we want in my opinion, as long as it's not illegal. <laughs> Like okay, that. so yeah, so you would say that we can. Um, I, well, I say we, be, we should. The society should not tell us what not to say. Obviously, on a personal level, I don't think you should, you know, say certain things. <laughs> like if you were my right. friend and I'm just giving you an advice, but I don't think it's the society's job to tell us what to say or not. Okay, so you believe that I mean. you, you should personally judge what you should say. So if you have some comment that is sexist, for example, mm -hmm. you are allowed to say it, but you personally decide that you are not going to say it because you don't want to deal with the consequences of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or that it, because it's not a nice thing to say, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. But I shouldn't go to jail for it, is what I mean. Yeah. yeah. I, when I say, like, society shouldn't tell us what to say or what not to say, I just mean that, like... I Why Jordan Peterson lost his license? What did he say? Yeah, that, I mean, that's, like, a good example, right? That Like, for that... I think because, like, he said something like... Um, he posted something, you know, like... Um, Ellen Page. Do you know Ellen Page, the act actress? He no. became Elliot Page. So there's an actress. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. And then, uh, and I guess now, now he, because now it's she's a he. He was on the cover of some magazine, and he posted it. He he shared it, and he said something like something about how the, it's dangerous because it's. It's praising, um, like the doctor is like he said something about the doctor who, I guess, performed like surgery on her, and how that's that's like, you know, I, I forgot exactly the word he used, but he said he said something criticizing the doctor. Okay. And I think criti maybe criticizing Elliot Page for like. I guess influencing, you know, like young, young people, right? And then he lost. I think that's the thing that. Oh, uh, and then and then I think the Canadian government wanted him to come go through this training, where the training will tell you what you're allowed to say and not allowed to say. <laughs> and then if you don't go to that training, he's gonna lose his license. Okay. So, but also you, the the big thing actually is there was a, you know how he became famous is, and, and he was a professor at University of Toronto, mm -hmm. and there and Canada wanted to pass this bill called Bill C C sixteen, which is a compelled speech law which says, um, there is these gender pronouns, and if you misgender somebody right like you have to call somebody by their proper pronoun mm -hmm. and if you don't then that you can like that's illegal <laughs> it's like against the law for you to call somebody and then he's like no i will not you know i i, I don't stand for this law i will not follow this law because it's compelled speech right it's like there's free speech meaning you're not allowed to say something mm -hmm which is already bad enough, right? And, you know, I think the United States is the only country that has completely free speech. 
Like in France, you can go to jail、um, by making certain jokes. <laughs> really? Like, I, not everyone does, but there has been cases where some comedians, I, th- I think either in France or UK, that are, they got arrested for saying an offensive joke or something like that. Right? Because that's con- they consider it a hate speech or something like that. Right? So that's already bad. The fact that hate speech is illegal is already bad. It doesn't matter. If it's hate speech or not, it should still, they should still be about, allowed to say it. Like if you're an absolute, absolutist free speech like me. <laughs> But now, compelled speech is going one level above. It's saying that you have to use this word.、Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, it's not, about not, it's, not, it's not about not being able to say a word. It's saying they're actually forcing you to, they're literally putting words in your mouth. <laughs> right? Which is even one step worse. And that's the reason why he, he, he said no, because that's just the first step of if you follow this step, right? Okay, compel speech. Okay, boom, you can't say this word. But let's say the next, next、uh, election, new, new, new、uh, power comes into play, and they're like, okay, we're going to add to this, and now you can't say these words, right? Or, Let's say exactly what's happening to Jordan Peterson. Let's say somebody is speaking up against the government and the government wants to shut him down, right? Now they can say, oh, Jordan Peterson、uh, mis- misgendered somebody by c- mm-hmm. calling. Mm-hmm. Like maybe he just he didn't know that maybe somebody just looked like a guy and, and he called him, called him a he. But now he can get arrested for doing that, right? So. That's, that's why it's a slippery slope, right? Once you start putting things into law. And that's the real reason why he was against that. And, but then once he did that, now, like, the, the, the whole world. And this is why, like,、uh, I was talking about in that, in the discussion also. It's like, it's most people that call him a transphobe have never actually even listened to him before. They, all they did was listen to other articles and other newspapers and other、mm-hmm. people calling him a transphobe because of this Bill, Bill C16 thing. But if you actually listen to him in all the interviews, like there was one interview where he said, where the interviewer directly asked him, if you, if, if you have a trans student who asked you to call them, you know, call them a she, what would you do? And then he said, yeah, I would call them a she. <laughs> she like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I would. You know, like I, I, I would respect that person and call them by their preferred pronouns. Wow. It's not, it's not that he's trying to be an asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just is against this law. Like he'll be respectful enough to call people by their, prono- their preferred pronouns. Yeah. He's just saying, don't force me to do it. <laughs> Whether I'm going to call somebody by their pronouns or not. Mm. Is up to them, each individual person. The government shouldn't force them to do it, right? That w- that's all he was saying. Like, just because, just because I'm, I'm, I'm for free speech doesn't mean I'm. Like, if I'm free speech, right? And somebody wants to call somebody the N word, right? I'm for that. You should, say, you should be able to say the N word if you want.、Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I'm a racist. Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm going to say it. I'm just saying that everyone has the right to say if they want to, if that's what they choose. The government shouldn't tell them what not to say. Yeah, so、saying. you have your personal reasons why you're not going to say it. Exactly. Because it's exactly what ha- what's happening right now, right? Like, you know, all this university like, started ignoring free speech. Like, all these universities started saying, Call, saying, oh, you can't say this word. You can't do that. You can't wear this because it's, it's hate speech.、Mm-hmm. It's hate crime. It's whatever it is, right? So, like, all this university like, started protesting, blah, 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 and then, like, university, like, this happened in a university, like, University of Toronto, right? And then there was, like, another university here in, in、uh, Portland where one day, like, none of the white students were allowed to come to campus. Like, that's racist, right? Like, 
because like this, this is like black, you know, solidarity, like, you know, this is only for black okay. students or something like that. But, but here's the problem. Like, like university is so woke right now that what's happening is, um, universities are banning certain words. Like you're not allowed to say this. You're not allowed to use this word. You're not allowed to use this word. Right. Mm. And they were okay. And then, and then when some students were like, no, that's not okay. We should be allowed to say whatever we want. But then the students like were, the university and students were on the same side. They're like, no, that's, that's bad. And we should ban that word. But you know what's happening now, right? Now there's all these like pro-Palestinian protests happening. <laughs> and the university doesn't like that. So they're actually banning those protests. So, so those students are actually getting hurt by the same thing that they did like they wanted to silence certain people mm -hmm. and now the university is using that to silence them it's like exactly what happened in soviet union yeah. like all these people were like oh communism blah, blah, blah. and then later on the government used the same laws against them so this is why like putting things into law and putting things into like that is so dangerous because you're giving power to some someone or something like the government or whatever it is or the university or whatever it is yeah. that even if you feel like at that moment it's the right thing to do later on they can use the same thing against you that's why like power should be decentralized the whenever there's like a concentration of power just in one area i think that's bad it should be more power should be spread out you know so, <laughs> yeah, I, have, I don't know how we got to we got here. <laughs> I have multiple things on my mind. Um, so, I don't know. Um, this remind me also of uh, there was at certain point they wanted to ban physical punishment for kids so that it's. You. Well, they that that is they, that's physical violence. So that's not, that's a little different, right? No. Why? There is difference between physical punishment and beating a child. So they're equalizing. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, for example, like if if you make them like raise their hand like this or something like that. It means that if you are for if you imagine that. Um, uh, you smack a child on their butt and it's not like there's no like any kind of mark. that's beating that's physical punishment no it they shouldn't is... be allowed to do that because that's it's still physical violence right? like I, I, okay man, I don't know if they should be allowed to do that or not but that is not covered under the free speech because it's not speech it's actual I thought you meant like, for example, if I make you do 20 push-ups, that's like physical punishment. Oh, no, no, no. I was thinking about parent-child. So if you are... Oh, whether a parent's supposed to hit a lot. To... Yeah. Well, that... what, what, I don't know the law against that. Is there... Well, there was a point to... in, in Serbia, um, they were thinking to, to have some kind of rules if if this should be allowed or shouldn't be allowed. So, mm. so this reminded me of, so if you are against this law, so there is a law that, for example, if we imagine you should not, parents are not allowed to, uh, to, to do any kind of physical punishment to their kids. And then if you are against that law, it means that you are for beating children. So this is, Mm, and it's totally <laughs> it's totally like missing the the point you're not yeah. for the law but it means that you're beating you are for the beating yeah. children yeah that's i think that's kind of what happened with this free speech thing like if somebody if somebody is for free speech like some activists will come out and say oh you're a racist yeah yeah it's like what <laughs> how did you go from here to here <laughs> like... exactly exactly but yeah so 
what I would like is, can you, for example, show us right now mm -hmm. uh, five Jordan Peterson's interviews or clips that we should watch on YouTube? I don't know. I can't. I can't just come up with it. I have to watch. Like I, I actually don't. I I don't think I really watch any of his short clips because his short clips are meaningless. <laughs> because the things that he talks about is like so kind of deep. Okay. That you have to at least watch like ten minutes of it <laughs> for okay. him to like and get to show, a point. <laughs> show the long version. Yeah. I guess a lot of it is like his is gonna be like his like I love his Disney lecture. He has this all of his lectures are online. And I love the one where he he talks about the Disney movies. Right. And like he looks at there's like a Pinocchio like there's one where he talks about Pinocchio, which is awesome. Like and how he, he, he starts talking about like how in the beginning. So each section of the Pinocchio, like he'll talk about this, and he'll he'll talk about how how this is actually a lesson, and he'll maybe even compare it to like how this is the same story that you see in the Bible, and he, like there's like a actually he has like two lectures that are like each two hours long, that that just talks about story arc, story and archetype, and mm -hmm. it's, it's so fascinating, and so one of them is like you know. For example, he talks about Pinocchio mm -hmm. and how, um, like Jiminy Cricket, the little cricket, that, mm -hmm. you know that that that's the that's his consciousness, right? And like when when he wants to go and just do something, right? He wants to he he's, he goes there and he sees the puppet master, like and he's you know he he sees like him doing puppets like in the stage. And he's like, oh, people are cheering them. He's like, and it's like, oh, I want to be that. And he goes off. Oh. And then the that that guy, he's actually a bad guy. So he just steals Pinocchio and puts him in a cage and takes off, right? But the 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 Jiminy Crick is like, no, we should go to school. Like, he, but on the way to school, he stops and he wants to go see this thing, right? So the conscious is telling him that no, mm -hmm. we, we shouldn't do that. We should go to school. Blah blah blah. But certain, along the way, it's not like the consciousness is perfect. Like the consciousness sometimes doesn't know what to do either, right? And so he talks about that's like how, how consciousness is. Like the consciousness is also figuring it out as they go to it. But mm -hmm. there's something within that that can, that kind of you know, like there's a lot of examples like that. Like or the or the fact that when like when when they go to Paradise Island where. You know they they put they put all the kid all these kids that basically you know are didn't do the good thing they skip school or whatever the bad kids like he 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 collected all of them and threw them into Paradise Island right because those were the kids that were lured into this mm -hmm. and they put them into Paradise Island and Paradise Island is like um it's like a it's 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 um it's like an amusement park. Right, like Disneyland, like it has rides and things like that, but it's like a little bit creepy. Mm -hmm. And if you see a lot of like horror stories and horror movies, it actually happens in the amusement. There's something about amusement parks that are a little bit creepy. And he's talking about the reason why is because it's 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 a it's it's um it's a forced pleasure. Like amu amusement parks are created to create this pleasure, but artificially create this pleasure, right? Mm -hmm. And in that in that movie, like in in the Pinocchio, like Paradise Island, like all the kids are smoking and drinking and doing all the bad things, right? But once you start doing them, they turn into donkeys, right? And once you turn into donkeys, like now they can't speak anymore because they're so. So he talks about the symbolism of that, and then how, um, yeah, I mean, there's it's it's so he goes through all these Disney movies and talks about the symbolism. And he compares it to like some of them, like he, and he also has a biblical series where he tells, tells about the story of the Bible. And he talks about how like um, Canaan and Abel, right? That that's like, Canaan and Abel is like the, the second story, like right after, you know, like the Garden of Eve, mm -hmm. the, 
the right after that, the next story is like the story of Cain and Abel and how, you know, one brother is like, first of all, <laughs> like one is told to tend the sheep and the other one is to harvest, right? So, and I forgot which one's which. I guess Cain. Cain is the, the bad one. The good one? Oh, bad one. So, so Abel is like tending the sheep. And Cain has to like harvest all the things, but um, but but one is jealous of the other. He's like, why? Mm -hmm. How come he gets the easy job? And for him, it's like he works his ass off, and he 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 gives him the sacrifice that the god wasn't would, would reject it, right? And that's kind of how like people who are bitter, resentful feel, right? We're like, oh, why is that guy like oh, that guy is um you know, saying all this stupid shit and he's getting so many followers and he's making so much money, but I'm doing like actually good work here, but okay. like, you know, I'm not successful. Why? Like, it's not fair. And we, we start getting resentment, right? So it's, that's like one, one of the first sins they, they talk about. I, I don't know the Bible that well, so I don't know exactly what is the lesson from there. Me neither. But it's, it's, it's like that story is so powerful because it's, it's it, it like... You know, so he, he that's kind of what what happens when we go in, go down in resentment. You know, mm -hmm. like like yeah. envy and resentment. Okay, I will I will check that out. You mentioned that a few times. Yeah, I'm, I can't really re-explain his videos because it's something like that. Like he does it so well and so <laughs> it makes perfect sense. But when I try to. Mm -hmm re-explain it it's hard um so have you read his have you read his books or you were watching his videos this was like from his lecture yeah, yeah, yeah. i didn't read his book no. okay i don't know what he talks about in this book um i don't know okay so i'll i'll put that on my list to watch so I have a few more topics, but I know that you are, you know, oh, with the time. we can talk about it until we can. comes and knocks on the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> GG is awesome. So we, we have two things either to talk about meat truth sandwich or about something that I saw on TikTok, uh, something some live where people were discussing about consent so what is a consent and let's talk about the one you really want to talk about the one you want want to talk about the most well the consenting is or the question the content consenting is so interesting but uh, the problem with that is because it's long it will take some time what's the consenting uh there is an a story so where with a guy between guy and a woman with woman and a guy and then if she really consent on something with this guy or not and how how people know is that the one with the dishwasher thing or no 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 oh okay oh so i probably haven't seen that video oh it's not a video it's a it's a TikTok live where okay. they are putting a prompt of a situation so there was a woman, she had financial struggles and she's um, because of some illness and she lost her job and there is a guy that is renting her place and uh, he's hitting on her for five years. Um, but now that uh, she, he is aware of her situation, he offers to her that uh, to leave three months rent free if she uh, spends a weekend with him. And she says, mm. yes. Mm -hmm. Is that the consent? So this is the question of live on. Is that consent for what? Is that did she did she really gave her consent? If she said yes, to accept consent for what? Consent for spending weekend with him. Um. Because I mean yes, <laughs> but well, or no, is, are you talking about like consent for like sleeping with them? That's that, that's two different things. Um, well, 
Yeah. This is, I mean, he said to spend weekend with him romantically, which includes sexual activities. Yeah. Well, well I see what you mean. <laughs> I don't think so. To me, that's not consent because I, I think a woman can say no. Even if she said, even if she like explicitly said yes to sleeping with them, when the moment comes and then she doesn't want to, she can still say no. So, I mean, like consent has to be all the way through and through, right? Like Exactly. But the only time you can you can say you can is like afterwards you can't go back. <laughs> yeah. But literally, like even like in the second you're about to do it, if she says, "Oh no, I changed my mind," then. So, <laughs> so I asked a question: if yeah. there, if we imagine, so the the okay, we are we are talking about that. So <laughs> the thing only that, if you want to. I mean, I have one meat root sandwich. So, I don't know. Okay, I'll leave it up to you. You pick. Ah. Let me just see my... Uh, well, well, mm -hmm. Let's talk about this one. Because Mitra Sandwich, I feel like for me, okay. is going to take longer. Okay. So, so the thing is, um, they in live, they made difference if it's a survival thing or not. So, if... Uh, if it's a matter of survival, then this is not the real consent because she's in a dangerous situation. She will be kicked out on the street. So... Oh. <laughs> I see. <laughs> but on the other hand, I was thinking... Uh, so, so then I ask in live, so if we imagine... I, I don't know if I buy that, right? Because yeah, I mean she's gonna get kicked out. The the no the the default is that she's gonna get kicked exactly. out. <laughs> exactly. You know what so I mean? This is what I was thinking about. If this is things thing of survival, because she was thinking about that option. It, it's not sad that there is another option to go back to her parents or to live uh, with a friend or to you know change something but she wanted to mm. establish the same uh level of uh, i don't know her way of lifestyle or that way of living without having adequately uh compensation like in terms of paying for that so this still is not like a survival thing uh no. at least for because me because what if it happened to a guy right a guy would not even have that option <laughs> He would just be homeless. That's it. We, if yeah. this was a guy, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, right? Yeah. He's just going to be homeless. <laughs> the other side of me. So why, why, why does that make a difference? Because it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. That just so, doesn't make sense. Yeah. So it looks like um, so people there were saying that there is like only one consent, but it's. It's never one consent. This is what you point out. And my assumption is that as well. Because it looks like in that moment she gave her consent. It's like, imagine you are on a date and you, a person is on a date and they invite a girl to. Oh, I see what you mean. Because this, okay. To their yeah, it's, it's, because I was thinking in my mind, consent in terms of like, but there's also like financial reward tied to this. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's why like it has to be explicitly said. Like, I think you can't say, I'll oh, spend a weekend with me. Like, it has to be like, because it's almost like business contract, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm asking, what's the problem with that? First of all, it's illegal because it's prostitution. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but uh so I guess that's why you can't make a contract. Um But yeah, I mean I guess it it still has to be explicit, right? I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on the situation. Like depends on it also probably depends on how he said it. 
and all yeah, of those things. You know, the thing is, there's also the fact that this woman was living in this guy's apartment for five years and he was hitting on her and she didn't find him threatening or she didn't find that thing dangerous for her for five years. So, and she was successfully saying no to this guy. So it doesn't look like a dangerous situation. Well, the dangerous part is that she can get, I guess she can get kicked out. Yes. But, no, that's the default. So that's like physically in a dangerous situation. Yeah, I guess it's, uh, I mean, yeah, it's so hard to say, right? Because you, it's like almost like you have to be there to, to assess the situation. It's one of those yeah, things. Like, why, why the, the, it's, I guess it's purposely not clear because mm -hmm. it, um, it drives you to think about possible scenarios. Because, you know, she's not the first person that doesn't have money to pay for something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would like to live in a bigger apartment and uh, to have more money, but I don't. So I live where I can. Like we're talking about, like, is it like, is it her fault or not? Is that if she doesn't go through with it? Is that what we're talking about? Like, what, what is like the actual question? I mean, we don't know if it's her fault or not because, you know, somebody can lose a job and there is some illness there, I don't know, in some among some family member. So No, no I'm, I mean, you cuz you said that she did agree to it, right? Yeah. And then and what's the question? Like afterwards, if she doesn't There's... sleep with them or something like that. There is no afterwards. There is just a question. Is that if she said yes, is that consent? Oh, is that consent? Oh, so it's a hypothetical situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a hypothetical situation. So they are discussing what is consent and what is not. I guess technically, no, it's not consent. Why? But technically, at that moment, he can be like, okay, then pack your shit and go out. <laughs> leave, leave. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, let's say like that weekend came and she's like, I never consented to this, right? Like, I never, I, I said I'll spend the weekend with you, but I never said I'll sleep with you. She can say that, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when she does, then then he can just say, okay then move out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's not consent. That's not consent, in my opinion. When, when she agrees to spending a weekend with them, that, that in itself is not consent. But it also, he, like he's also not consenting to, um, that to is, she her... can still stay for three months. Yeah. Yeah. I think that at that moment, that was a consent. Like if you imagine a guy and a girl um, going on a date and then he invites her to come to their place and she says, yeah, okay. At that moment, that is a consent to go to their place. Or even if, even if they are kind of, I don't know, saying here and there that, you know, what they are going to do. So they are not. So consent for what? Yeah. Consent for that, act, act, that activity. Like she consented to spending the weekend with them. Even though if imagine, not, nothing more, yeah. but imagine, imagine that in this example of guy and a girl to being together and imagine that he's actually invited her to have sex. So that, that that was that open, and she says yes. Mm -hmm. To me, that is a consent in that situation. 
but many times it happens that even though people um even though couple they kind of going to have sex and they are you know going toward that but at certain point mm -hmm. some of them are like i don't feel like it yeah it means that like this, a, uh, it was a consent till that moment so right now i'm not giving a consent so this is another situation so every yeah. situation when two people but that's why i i think I'm assuming that when they say consent, I'm assuming like in that scenario, like where you're, where, whether you're on a date or something like that. So meaning consent, meaning if it does happen, that it's not, it's not rape or it's not, you know, it's not okay. sexual. Okay. It's not a sexual assault. It's because I consented. Like I thought you meant in that, that's when we use the word consent, right? We don't use the word consent for a business. Like, <laughs> You know, when you when you hire a prostitute and you have sex, you don't say, "Oh, yeah, she consented." Like that's that's just not the yeah. term that they use. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's so crazy that people would even tie this to that, because like if you if if somebody's letting like specifically spelling it out, I'm gonna let you stay here for three months, <laughs> right? That means like we're gonna be clear about how many months you stay, but we're not gonna be clear about this. No, that's that's not how it works, right? <laughs> it's not a date. <laughs> yeah, it's a business transaction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, that's how I look at it. Well, it sounds like a business transaction. It sounds yeah. like that. So. There's I don't a trade know. happening. Sorry? There's a trade happening. It's a trade. Yeah, yeah it's a trade. So, so the question is, can, can somebody trade with their body? This is... I mean, oh, this okay. Is so it, it, it comes down to like... like I think it, right now it's illegal, obviously, at least in the United States. Uh, except for a certain... I guess locations or whatever it is. Like, I think in in Vegas there are some places where it is illegal. It, it is legal, but I mean, I personally don't think prostitution is good. Like, I, I don't, I don't buy this whole sex work is real work bullshit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I agree. Yeah, because it's like like it 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 has to do with so much. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find like another analogy for another type of um, an, another type of I guess work or task that will be at that level because like I, I here, here's my problem with it right like if sex work is real work would you let your daughter do it if she wanted to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> most likely not right <laughs> okay. well it's, it's just like an under, it's like being a waitress what's the difference <laughs> right I mean, we can say, would you want your daughter to work in a, let me find the word, in a mine? If she wanted to? I guess not, yeah. But that is real. Mining is real work. <laughs> there are some, some jobs that are, you know, not... So then uh, I'll put it this way. If sex work is real work and if somebody gets raped, right? Then that should be just as just as serious as somebody um you know, like 
miss like using you for labor and not paying you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But it's actually much more serious than that, right? So, like, it, it's it's just not the same. <laughs> it's just a mistake. For example, uh, if you are in a mine and you are, your way is stuck to go back and you almost mm-hmm. die, it's just a mistake at work and, you know, it will be your employer will pay you off for this damage. Mm -hmm. So do you mean like that? Yeah. I mean, there, there is, when it comes to other kind of work, there's some sort of a detachment in terms of emotion. Whereas in with sex work, there is no detachment in emotion. Like there's something else there. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's it's not just labor like any other labor i guess that's what i'm trying to say yeah i don't know maybe 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 it is real work i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Somebody would have to if, if... imagine imagine that your yeah. job yeah. is to let some someone beat you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not real work either. <laughs> Why? <laughs> if for somebody to beat me? Yeah, you are you're paid. I I, no, I guess maybe it is because if I'm a fighter, that's what's happening. <laughs> if I'm a boxer or something like that, yeah, but you UFC can fight fighter. back. But you know, in this context, you cannot fight back. You just need to take the punch. Yeah, I don't know. I guess so. I guess it's the same thing, right? <laughs> it's really the same thing. So I guess in it's that case, like maybe... In, uh, you know, yeah. when if you... I guess it is real work then in that case. Yeah. Because like, it's you know, you're, you're if you're consenting to it, if you're agreeing to it, yeah. So there is something, but it's... It's weird to imagine that someone's work is to let somebody beat them. Because when we imagine work, it's yeah. we imagine that we do something. Yeah. You know, here the work is not to do anything, not to not it's to just have to take take a beating. Yeah. So it's kind of not in terms of I don't know, maybe human in it's not align with human soul or something like that to just be helpless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say. But we can imagine a person that, I mean, you have um, BDSM communities and people that enjoy it. <laughs> that's what i was thinking yeah. <laughs> people that enjoy like those people are getting some of those people are getting paid yeah yeah and actually they they love it some of them pay <laughs> they pay to get beat <laughs> yeah for them if somebody tell them we will pay you to be beaten they will love that yeah yeah, I guess so. I guess, as long as it's two adults agreeing or whatever, I guess it's fine. Yeah. I mean, who who are we to say you can't do that or you can't do that? I mean, like when it, like legally, I think it's fine. Yeah. Right? As long as it's two adults agreeing on that. The thing is, yeah, I think that that they- I don't know if it's a good thing for society or not. <laughs> But yeah. I think where things get messy is where 
Mm-hmm. They mix if somebody wants to do that or if somebody is forced to do that. So if somebody is forced to do that, this is majority of, of prostitutions are forced to do it because they don't have, at least they don't see any other options. Yeah, otherwise they wouldn't be paid. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so there is a question of um, of this. Is this a necessary? I mean, they're forced. Being, they're being forced to do it as much as anybody is forced to go to go to their work. You know, like yeah, nobody's going to work if they're not getting paid, right? So. If we if we see that, um... yeah, I mean, I I I don't think legally there's anything wrong with it. It's it, I guess it's you can't really say one is one is okay, one is not okay. Like it's it's not the government's job to decide all of that, right? And it's it's literally the old world's oldest profession, right? Yeah, it's existed since the beginning of time. But like I remember, like I heard someone talking about how like it it. It is, um, like, it is a sacred thing. Sex is a sacred thing, right? Because, um, you know, like, when you have sex somebody with sex with somebody, like, there's going to be emotions attached. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And the, you know, mm-hmm. the more you have, like, for example, like. You know, like the Christians, right? Like if 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 they're virgins until they get married and then they have sex and that's the only person that they have sex for the rest of their life, right? Like that's really sacred, right? And and there's something about the more people you have you sleep with, the more numb you, you get to the person that you're to to, to the person that you're with right now. Mm-hmm. Like if the person that you're with right now is the only person that you've ever been with, then there's going to be a, a, a stronger um, bond there than if if you've been with, with like 100 people. I mean, but this is... This is like, I mean, it's definitely true for me, right? Like if I, you know, if, if I'm just, you know, with a lot of people, then every relationship I'm in after that, it's, it becomes l- less and less meaningful. If we say a lot and none, it's kind of a huge. Uh... Yeah, it's, it's a scale. The more the more of people I sleep with, the less meaningful it is. The less meaningful the sex is. <laughs> yeah, I. I mean, it, but it's, it's the simple. same with anything else. Yeah, right? but it's not that simple. It's like. If like when we are we were talking about toxic relationships, if you mm-hmm. repeat the same relationship with different people, you didn't you didn't didn't learn anything from that. So with next person, it's going to be the same. So you're just less and less patient with what is happening. But if you learn from every relationship, then you don't need to repeat that much relationship to to have something that actually you enjoy. So it's not about the number. It's about how... I guess that's why Christians, like... I mean, that's why I guess Catholics don't have sex until they get married. Like, because you can find that out before... You don't have to have sex with somebody to find that out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I can guarantee you for for like I I think a girl should make a guy wait. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because as soon as a guy has sex with you, like the chance that they're not as attracted to you anymore is gonna get be so high. 
I mean, that happens to me every time. So, <laughs> so it's it's like uh, that's why you should, uh, as a girl, you should hold out as long as you, you possibly can. Mm-hmm. You know. And the reason the reason why is because like because of that thing, right? The the longer you wait, the more meaningful it's gonna be. I mean, Sierra and her. I know some guys like that just sleeps with like a different girl every like every week or every day, and to them, like literally, they're like they're they're miserable because they can never have that feeling of like. Oh, this is something special. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like, it's, it's, to them, it's just like <laughs> it's just just another girl. Yeah, you know? that's like Barney in How I Met Your Mother. Remember? Did you no, watch it? I don't watch that show. Okay. But this guy. So the thing is, um, it's not about the number. It's about actually how much somebody can click and connect with another person and for that it takes time to meet a, a person but if you only stick to physical things then it's really going to be like a physical activity so then you know how it's oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Is going to be yeah, 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 yeah that's why you should make them wait <laughs> yeah. because like for most guys that's the goal right so the longer you wait, the more you're forcing them to spend time with you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But imagine Like I heard something like for a guy to fall in love with you. Like for a woman to fall in love with the guy, like sex has a lot to do with it. If like if a woman didn't enjoy the sex, they're not gonna fall in love with you. Mm -hmm. But if the woman enjoy the sex, the chance that they're going to fall in love, like their pheromone has a lot to do with like, mm -hmm. you know, their, 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 like how they fall in love for, but for a man, it actually has to do with how much time you spend. Yeah. So do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So I, I think that's why it's, it's in, it's in the woman's best interest to have the man spend it. Like no guy's ever going to be like, you know, Oh, I don't love you. But then after you have sex with you, they're going to be like, oh, I love you now. That's never going to happen. <laughs> if anything, the opposite might happen. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, but imagine how... So if, if somebody is considering sex as going to the gym as physical activity... So I guess that you know you cannot be excited. Yeah, that's why it's 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 kind of bad, right? Because it's going to hurt you in your regular relationship. Yeah. But also even if somebody waits and then consider mm -hmm. sex as physical activity, again, mm -hmm. you just prolonged it a little bit. It's kind of funny here and there, but still it doesn't change much. Because maybe it's exciting yeah, to, to do like, oh, this was a hard thing to check on my list, but I checked it. So uh, still. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, you can't, force this, you can't force somebody to fall in love with you, no matter how much time you spend with them. <laughs> yeah. So what you said about that sex is sacred and it's about emotional emotional attachment that happens so i guess if you cut that emotional attachment then you yeah i i still think it's sacred because like just think about it right like it, it's not just like a friendship because like imagine you have you know like 10 people that you're friends with and you don't know them for the same amount of time but one you had sex with and the other ones you didn't you're going to share something extra with that person that you don't share with yeah sure these other nine people right yeah so it's still i think kind of sacred yeah in my opinion <laughs> So the question is, who are we if we don't have emotions? So 
because if you are a sex worker, you need to cut this thing. And I think that's why, like, a lot of sex workers are very, like, they have mental, yeah, like mental health issues. Probably for that reason, or like it's 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 linked, like, or people that have mental health issues, or like, you know, like were were abused when they were younger or something like that. Yeah. More, like there's a big correlation between that and sex work, right? You don't, you don't, you, usually you don't see like people who grew up in a perfect environment <laughs> with in a loving home and a good family and, you know. Yeah. That goes in, goes into sex work. Other, I mean, if the sex work was really like real work, why, why doesn't, why doesn't somebody that you know lived a very good life, went to college, and all of that, go into sex work? You make more money <laughs> than going to work as a receptionist at some company. Yeah. So definitely it's connected to mental health. Um, I don't know, issues. I remember like uh, there was this one, one of these like Ben Shapiro owns college kid videos or something like that. And he was talking about how um, this woman was asking about how uh what did she say well i don't i forgot exactly what she asked but ben shapiro's was talking about how like in modern society what happens is um we created this culture of like you know as a the one of the feminist <laughs> movement is like oh yeah like you can you can, uh, you know, just like a guy sleeps around, like a girl should be able to, like the whole, the slut shaming thing, right? You shouldn't slut, slut shame people, mm -hmm. right? Like you should be proud of being a slut and, you know, you can sleep with as many guys as you want. And some, some girls like are actually like proud of like advertising that number. It's like, oh, I slept with so many guys. Like what, what that whole culture, how, how, like we can't, we can't say that. And, you know, like that, we can't say that because then what we're doing is we're devaluing the value of sex, right? Okay. Because we're saying, oh, sex yeah. just not, doesn't matter, right? Yeah. But then, like, on the other hand, like, you know, like we're, we're, we're talking about the, that there's a rape culture and it's how toxic it is because of their rape culture. Well, well, sex doesn't matter, right? So then, like, it. What we're doing is we're by instigating this, we're also instigating this. What we should mm -hmm. be doing is saying that you know, like, sex is sacred, and we shouldn't be, um, we, we shouldn't treat it so lightly, right? And then, like, you know, that that also like against the feminist movement, like uh, that men oh, should be. Safe. So it means that if uh, sleeping, I mean, obviously that, that this doesn't justify this. Yeah, That's not what I, know, he's saying. I know. But um, so it in that context, it, if sex is not sacred, then if somebody uh, beats you, beats you up, and then if somebody got raped, it should be like equal punishment. It's like a yeah, you know, I guess yeah physical abuse. But I think what he was trying to say is, I don't, I don't know if that's what he was saying, like legally. But what he was trying to say is like, you can't be promoting this culture, mm -hmm. and then this culture at the like, and and then downplaying this culture at the same time, right? Because this they're related. But how is it related? Because you're 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 downplaying the importance of sex. You're saying that mm -hmm. sex is, is is not sacred. It's not. It shouldn't be between somebody who's in a loving relationship. It should be just 
anybody should have, have have sex with anybody they want. Yeah, I imagine how how sacred sex is among Muslims, and because they're the you know the importance of how for women to be covered, and so nothing to be there. Um, and if rape happens there, I don't know what is the the punishment, but I guess they are quite. Um, yeah, I don't know. You know. I imagine they have s- stronger or punishment for that, much strong. I'll send you the video with Ben Shapiro, but it was like he made a really good. He made a good argument that made me go like, "Huh, I never thought of it that way." <laughs> I, I forgot exactly what he said. But, okay. Yeah. Don't forget to send me. Okay. I think I gotta go soon. Yeah, I mean, we can wrap it up here. So I don't know what's the answer. You know, anything. Well, I guess we can uh, we can make the carousel now. <laughs> the, but what's the, the last one we talked about? The compliment thing. I, I think we I think we can still um, make the carousel from the perspective of the person receiving the compliment. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That they Which should... I think is actually a better lesson. Is it's what I was trying to say. Motivation yeah. for the behavior and not the behavior, not to judge by someone's behavior. Yeah. Or or maybe something like, if something like a compliment triggers you, then we should you should probably look into that. You should we should be more curious on why. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like there are certain things that triggers me. Yeah. But it shouldn't, it really shouldn't. If you really objectively think about it, like that shouldn't bother me, but it does. Yeah. And we should explore on why or something like that. Maybe that that's the direction that you can think about. You want to try to rewrite that and then. Yeah. So if we are triggered on compliment, it's something. Put it on circle. Yeah. You haven't done your assignment in a while. I didn't. Oh, let me. Quick question. Quick question. I uh-huh. I'm glad that you notice uh, that my absence is noticed. So <laughs> I'll make sure to to write. Um, we're, we're we're watching you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. So, uh, quick question. I saw there is the truth and the real truth. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? The myth and the truth are just the opposite of each other. So they can be swapped. So for example, oh, okay. if I say, you know, like the the, the example that I, uh, I actually have like a new tweet about, I had one example. Okay, so if I say, um, ignore the haters, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we, myth is oh, it just ignore the trolls, ignore the haters, right? Mm-hmm. Like, who cares what other people think? Don't worry about what other people think. On the other hand, people say, "Oh, you got, you have to listen to your customers, listen to your audience," mm-hmm. right? So, myth, li- ignore the hater, listen to your audience. But I can flip it. I can say the myth is listen to your audience, mm-hmm. but the truth is the like ignore the haters, right? Yeah. yeah. So it, it can be vice versa. The real truth is what the the truth is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so real truth is the nuanced truth. This yeah, the real truth is the final lesson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. The myth is either this or this. It can be either. I see. And and the, the way I would explain it is, you know, I, I, I gave the one about the niche as an exp- example. If I was making a carousel... 15 years ago, the myth is, oh, the more service I provide, the better it is, right? Mm -hmm. But if I were to make a carousel now, I would actually use the opposite as the myth. Oh, you think everybody should niche down, right? Because it's it's, it's, the the pendulum has swung the other way. Like if 20 years ago I was making the carousel, you know, I, I would say the myth is that we need to work hard and 
you know, save money. Like we need to do the job that, mm. you know, work hard and whatever it is. Right. But if I were to make a myth right now, I would say, you know, everybody says work life balance. Right. <laughs> right. Like, so if the, if the culture shifts, then the myth shifts too. Okay. I see. I see. I see. Also, depending on the audience, the myth shifts too. So if I'm talking to like somebody who's like, if my audience is all about the hustle culture and work hard, work hard, right? Then I would say I would start that as a myth. But if my audience is more like, oh, you know, work is toxic, it's work-life balance and mm -hmm. we need more rest, <laughs> then I would say I would use that as the myth. Okay. You have your Gigi knocking and mine is also here. <laughs> <laughs> your <Picking> mine? <laughs> Come on. Okay. Oh. Enjoy. Uh, to tell Marco I say hi. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Hello. Hope I'm not... <laughs> hey, Marco. Thank you. I hope I'm not stopping you guys from enjoying no, no, no. your... No, no. We are... We're fine, I think. Yeah, we're fine. We'll see after we end this call. If we're <laughs> <laughs> no, no, everything is just fine. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good talk. Thank you, everyone, Thank for you listening. Much. And see you. I'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye bye.